Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. This is your host, Colin Cattell. Returning guest on the program today is my good friend, Ali Zamani. He's the chairman of Mexican Gold, a company that Palisade owns a 19.9% position in. Ali, welcome back to the program. Hi, Colin. Thank you. Good to be here. Since you went on the board of Mexican Gold, the company has really turned around. There's been a couple financings earlier this year that brought in about four, four and a half million dollars. And today I'm just absolutely ecstatic about the news that came out this morning on that big hole. So I want to start there and ask you what the significance is of LM40, the hole that just came out today. Yeah, so hole 40, I guess if you step back and look at the history of this project, when they were mining gold 100 years ago at $35 an ounce, they were mining, you know, 5, 8, 15 gram material. And we always we always knew that material was somewhere here. They didn't mine at all. They didn't have they didn't have the modern tools we did now. We we have now to find this stuff. So whole 40 kind of confirmed what we always thought about this project. There's high grade mineralization, and I, I think most people have looked at the intercepts by now. But but the main highlight is nine grams over 38 meters, and and that's a big intercept. I think what I find most interesting about this is that it occurred at a dike structure that crossed our initial maiden resource. So I wouldn't call this a step out hole, but I wouldn't call it an infill hole either. If you look at what the resource model thought that hole should return, it would have, it would have thought it would have returned something like one third the intercept at probably one eighth the grade. So it's three times the intercept and eight times the grade of what the resource model would have predicted would have been there. And the beauty is that area where the dike is, that's, that's one of the least explored areas of the El Dorado Juan brand zone. And the dike actually, while it cuts through our resource, which is where we drilled, the dike extends far beyond the resource laterally. So the dike could prove to be a control where we could do more additional step out holes at these similar type grades and intercepts. But I do want to add, not only did it increase the grade, as, as, as I said earlier, it increased the depth both vertically on both ends. So um, not only was the old resource model showing a smaller intercept, this is this is a definitely a resource increasing hole. At the conference in Jekyll Island that we were both at a couple weeks ago, Eric Sprott spoke and he talked about a couple investment criteria that he uses. And one of them that rings very similar to where we're at now is trying to figure out what the company has before the market figures it out. Today's news is uh, huge in that it's discovered two new zones above the existing resource. It's then, as you said, increased the, the grade of the resource. It's then extended the resource at depth. And three other drill holes that are not even being discussed because they're overshadowed by that hole stepped out 65 meters to the west. And one could, one could s- speculate that that actually increases the width of the overall resource by some 30 to 40 percent. Hence, you can look at the million ounces that's already been put out and say, maybe there's two million ounces here, and maybe there's even more. And that's getting really exciting for the market. Yeah, no, I, the, we always knew this was a big area. And I think the public always thought this is a potty scarn. And we always thought the valleys, the gorges, and the dikes, and the intrusions chopped it up and we're just going to drill the little pieces that are left and we have good control and understanding of the system. I mean, my personal opinion of what we found is what we were drilling before was kind of the low grade stuff and those, albeit it's high grade, but relative to this deposit, it's the lower grade stuff and those step outs are great too, but it looks like we're finding the plumbing of the system where the high grade stuff was and this dike is a big structure and there's other dikes on it. Um, So, you know, it's, it's kind of taking our understanding of it, but now we have this understanding of it, but we also have a different understanding of where the high grade material may be. So I, you know, this is really exciting. I think, um, you know, wait and see, but some good results are going to come. I mean, this hole has changed what our drilling plan 
has been for the remainder of this program, and, and we're going to make some adjustments based on what we found here. Ali, uh, news came out after the assays that the drill rig has now been remobilized uh, after having drilled that LM40 hole and the three step outs. The drill rig was moved over to Cinco Sonores. The results of that are still pending. It's now been moved back to the LM40 area, and some immediate targeting around, immediate drilling around that target is happening. What can the market expect from Mexican gold over the next? call it 30 to 60 days. Yeah, so we, you know, we were doing a very logical approach. We, our maiden resource was on two of eight discoveries. So we wanted to, the other six, we wanted to add resources to those six. With this, you know, quasi resource increasing, but non-step out whole, we're, we've mobilized the rig back to this area. So we're going to, we're going to start looking around this dike. Um, I, you know, we know where the dike is, we know where it goes. Um, so it's a question of whether the different areas we drill are going to also be mineralized. You know, obviously if we drilled right next to it, it will be mineralized. You know, the further away you go, your confidence level goes down. So we're going to do a couple different tests here. You know, we're, you know, hopefully the goal here is to drill as far away from that as possible and hit it, but also drill close to it and, and also show con- continuity. So, you know, we're really excited. I I suspect we're going to have some other excellent holes in this vicinity. Um, I think the goal is not to only drill where you know you're going to find stuff. So, you know, we'll we'll press it a little bit on the extent. Hopefully those keep hitting, but uh, you don't know where it ends until you kind of press that. So we'll we'll have some some different results, but I I suspect we're going to have some, some results similar to this going forward. It seems that just about every hole that's been drilled on this property has hit gold, and that's an unusual situation for any mining company. It's also a great situation because investors and the market love to see a constant flow of news coming out. Would it be fair to say that the plan here is to continue this drilling in perpetuity uh, and and make sure that results are continuing to come to the market and that the resource is continuing to be delineated? Yeah, absolutely. I, I like nothing more than to keep the drill rigs running. And I think the more success we have, which I suspect we will, will enable us to do that. Um, again, this probably 24 months ago was a potty scone discovery, although we always thought different. Then we discovered it was a bigger system controlled by sill. We started understanding that and our, you know, again, we started hitting gold on almost every hole. Now we have this intrusive going through it. We're going to test that. And we also have the bottom of the sill, which Torix has already proved out that model. So there's several areas where we can hit high-grade stuff. Um, Underneath the sill is kind of for a future drill program um, where we'd be drilling a little bit deeper at a little bit higher cost. But it's, it's amazing to have the grades we're hitting so close to surface, being able to drill it with manned portable rigs. Uh, You're not going to find that anywhere in Mexico. So yeah, I, I think to the extent that our drilling costs are $75 $75 a, a meter and we're the lowest drilling costs in in the Western Hemisphere, I think, because of these man portable rigs. And we can find gold before this at $4 an ounce. I think it only makes sense for us to, to keep these rigs running as long as possible. And the speculation that Palisade Research recently made in our article of this week was saying that these four holes have now paved the way or opened the door for showing the potential for another million ounces, obviously those four holes are not going to infer by 43101 status another million ounces, but the the cost of discovery here is incredibly cheap, and that has us as investors very excited. Ali, I appreciate you coming on the program, and I'm going to make it a point to get you back on uh, at more more often intervals as this news flow picks up. Thanks, Colin. Be happy to be here. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bit. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, It could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?